I'm the kind of person who likes to look at the world realistically. And if you think about it realistically, the good will never prevail. Because everywhere that the light shines, it casts a shadow. So you can never have a world completely devoid of darkness. By, on the other hand though, you can have a world completely devoid of light. You, know, you can have a world that's completely drenched in darkness with no source of light whatsoever. But there will never be a world of nothing but light. There, everywhere that there is good, it creates evil. I mean, Lex Luthor was a, always a, he was always evil. But he didn't become a villain until Superman showed up, and that's when Lex was like, let's destroy the world today. You know, and depending on which comic book you read, most of the time, Joker wasn't created until after Batman arrived. I mean, that's just kind of how the world works. And that's why fantasies are so great, especially for people like me, because sometimes fantasies are the only thing that keep me alive. I mean... The world is not a really a great place to live. I've never really fit in with the world. And ever since I was a little kid, my brain just instinctively was like, well, fuck it, you can have your world, I'll create my own. One where I'm smart and brave and strong and the sexiest man alive and all the bitches want me. <coughs> and so, oh, for me, fantasies, uh, they, they're basic, they basically become my life force. And he never asked it, but some of my favorite books include like the Animal series, the, uh, I love the Hank the Cowdog series, the Chronicles of Narnia series, uh, the Wrinkle in Time series. Basically, I like a lot of series because I know what you're talking about, Trisha. Me, I'm the person who gets so wrapped up in fantasies that like, when somebody, when a story's done, it makes me cry. Sure, you can go through and read it again, but you can never really live the same adventure twice. It's just like, you can go back and remember the adventure, but it's not the same as actually living through it. That's why, you know, whenever I'm writing a story, like I've had times where a story that I spent time on, a lot of time on ended up getting deleted for some reason and I couldn't find it. And I'm just like, no! I mean, for me, the stories that I write, they're like my babies. I created these. I raised them. Could you imagine spending 17 years raising something and then you're just done with it? I mean, that's, and it's just, sure, it's still there. It still exists, but it's not the same. There are so many memories here. You can never understand. But... So yeah, I mean, I had a story that I didn't, I started, the, I, I didn't really start getting into writing until I was in high school, but when the first time I ever, the first character I ever created, I was like seven years old, and he ended up being the main character in a story that I didn't finish writing until I was 20. So that's, you know, a 13 year span of time that was spent, you know, crafting and creating this thing, and so suddenly one day I realized I can't come up with anything else to add to it that would honestly just make it better. I'm like, this is the story I want to tell. And it, it makes me sad because like now I don't get to have the fun of working on it. There are so many times where I reach the end of a story and it's like, I just don't want to write that last sentence because once I finish it, it's done. Uh, at least fantasies for me have always been a great escape from the reality that's way too difficult. Uh, and on the other hand, they can somewhat be bad for you. Like for me, it's hard. To, I mean, what I'm trying to say with that is though, like for me, I've always had trouble interacting with people. And so I withdrew into my fantasy so I didn't have to worry about that. Because you know what, my imaginary friends were better friends than my real friends because my imaginary friends did what the fuck I told them to. And so because of that, I never felt the need to be around real people. And so it was, it, I never really developed necessarily social skills until like almost college basically. The basic, not, not understanding the basic rules of interactions and personal space and all these other things. And to me though, something, it's kind of weird because uh, someone, I had a conversation with someone once and they brought up some famous quote from some famous guy I can't remember but he was like, the guy apparently said, like, I knew my imaginary friends weren't real because as I grew up, they didn't. So when I was eight, my imaginary friends were still six. And then I looked at him and I was like, 
Your imaginary fans aren't supposed to grow up? Apparently that's a thing. Cause me, I have like an imaginary twin brother who I created when I was six. And you know, we went to school every day for till we were like 16. And until up till the age of 12 years old, I would talk to him out loud in public until I realized, oh wait, nobody can see him. They all think I'm crazy. And you know what? I'm probably am crazy. I mean, uh, I have a lot of therapists who can attest to you that I'm more than likely very crazy. But I, I ne refuse to ever get myself actually tested because there is a good, very high possibility I have some sort of mental illness. Uh, but I don't want to lose the thing that makes me me. Because, like, this, it kind of feels like a superpower to me. You know, I mean, and I know every kid wants to be a superhero at some point in their lives. And I'm actually shocked, Trisha, that you never mentioned superheroes. I know you love them. I know you be reading them comics. I know how you do, girl. But, uh, so yeah, for me, it's like, I have this power to just create entire worlds, to live through entire lives. And I can literally be anybody else but me. And yes, that I know that's probably going to sound sad to some of you, but like most days I just don't want to be me. I'm not at a point in my life where I can really say like, I'm just happy being me. I'm still working on getting to that point, but until then, I've got my fantasies. And so uh, I'm scared to get tested and find out what I really have because then motherfuckers going to try to fix me. But I don't want to be fixed. I mean, I, it took a lot, 20 fucking years, but at some point in time, I finally accepted that this is just who I am. And I'm actually starting to like it. You know, and I've got such a unique talent that so many people out there wish they had, and I don't want to do anything to risk losing that. And so, for me, I mean, fantasies have kind of become my life now. I mean, it's, it's basically the only thing I exist for. There are some days where the only reason I'm able to make it through work or through school or everything else is because I know I can get home and I can work on this story again. Or I can create a new one. Or I can get lost in this good anime and all these characters and stuff. So, I feel like fantasy is definitely a necessity to our lives. And also, depending on what you call a fantasy, because... I think the def I don't know if this is the dictionary's definition of it, but like a fantasy is like something imagined, created, you know, basically like with no proof of existence. Like a lot of people who would consider religion a fantasy, and while religion it can be used for in the wrong way, that's just certain people using it in a negative way. Religion in itself can be a helpful thing to certain people for certain aspects of their lives, and. The greatest thing that a fantasy can do is hope. Because if you think about it, really, hope is a fantasy. I mean, hope is just, you know, believing that things will get better with no proof that it actually will. You know, and there's no, there's really no basis for it. It's just believing so strongly and just knowing that, hey, it's, it's true. But it's really not, if you think about it. But that's just me. I consider myself to be more realistic. There can be no thing as false hope because hope is simply a belief. At the same time, hope is not at all realistic. I consider hope to be a fantasy, but it's a fantasy that I'm more than happy to indulge in because it's a fantasy that helps me get to sleep at night. You know, without, of course, crying myself to sleep until I'm so tired that I just pass out. Now, that's another option. I have issues. In case that wasn't already obvious, but yeah, so fantasies are great.